Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. I continued further into the shop, my footsteps silenced by the lush carpet. Sitting at a round table next to a wall behind a roll of low handrails barely reaching to my waist, a red haired woman, Narasaki Hibiki, raised a hand to catch my attention. Narasaki? Oh, is that the tips thing? Person? Over here! Oh no, where's, where's Takako? Went up the steps to her table as she folded the newspaper she had been reading. I thought I came early. My appointment today finished early, so I thought I might as well come ahead of you. There was an empty milk pack, a half-finished cup of coffee, and what looked like a cake plate in front of Narasaki. There was nothing but a silver paper and a few crumbs left on it. Narasaki wore a lab coat over her pale blouse and skirt. Came in your work clothes. They're the best clothes I have. I sat down facing her. The dim light from the walls fell on her white coat, dyeing it a pale hue of orange. Huh. So you really did become a doctor. Didn't believe me? Narasaki stretched her back. It suits you. Glad to hear that. Narasaki curled her lips slightly, letting out one of her characteristic sighs. I hope I didn't ruin your schedule by contacting you out of nowhere. Don't worry about it. It's been a while since we've last seen each other, so I was curious about you myself. When was it, back in elementary school? I don't remember. I narrowed my eyes, scanning through my memories, but Narasaki gave me a dismissive wave of the hand. It's okay, not like it was anything important. If you say so. Huh. Waiter placed a cup of steaming coffee in front of me, then placed a full cup of sugar cubes in a small milk bottle next to it before wordlessly returning to the counter. I stirred my coffee with a spoon, creating a miniature whirlpool in the middle as I poured some milk into it. My small white whirlpool kept on spinning. Hmm. They sat there satisfied with my whirlpool, I heard Narasaki chuckle. What? Oh, don't mind me. Her eyes were fixed on my hand stirring the white coffee. I left a spoon on the tray and took a sip from my coffee, letting its familiar bitterness spread across my mouth. I felt as though Narasaki was snickering at me again. They have good cakes here. You want me to guess what you've ordered? Try your luck. A rare green tea flavored cheesecake. How did you know? You can tell from the wrapping paper. Oh. Narasaki picked up her own cup. You like it? Yeah. Particularly the cream. I wonder if they used condensed milk with it or something. It's a bit like the mochi ice cream they sell back home. Now they mention it, that sure brings back memories. You think they make their cakes here? No, they bring them over from the cake shop next door. Part of the same brand. Hmm. If you like that you can buy something there on your way home. Mm-hmm. I personally recommend the sunflower. What kind of cake is that? A fruit cake with a chocolate base. Lots of cream in it too. I see. Maybe I'll check it out. I recommend it. As the background music that filled the shop slowly faded out, a melody of some classical piece soon took its place. Narasaki looked around the shop. Nothing wrong? I thought it was pretty convenient for a cafe and a confectionery to pair up like this. Does such a thing as con inconvenient pairing even exist? There's a place near where I live that runs both a cafe and a barbershop. Hmm? Guess you can enjoy a drink while you get your hair done, but that means there's little point in going there if all you want is a cup of coffee. Perhaps you have something to make it compelling. You can never tell unless you go check it out yourself. I guess it needs further investigation. Glancing at my wristwatch, I noticed how almost half an hour had already passed. I've only been chatting for half an hour, so don't worry. I think so, yeah. Checking the time, are you in a hurry or something? You look that way? I thought it was normal. Hmm. I should have contacted you earlier, but you always end up having some sort of work pile up at the worst of times. You're busy? I've had my hands full lately, yes. Good work? Yes. I've heard you were in the design business. That's right, I'm running my own company. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely way into the future than what we uh, we experienced before with uh, Takago. That means I have a bad feeling something did happen to Takago. 
Oh. Who told you? Hmm. Good question. I don't quite remember anymore. I see. Is your, car is your office nearby? Yes. Hmm. And can you make a living off it? Yep, yeah, I'm getting less offers compared to before the economy crashed. But there's still enough of a demand. Hmm. Well, it's just me and three employees, so it brings in enough money to sustain four people at least. So you were saying you're getting less offers, but you're actually getting busier? Pretty much. Get more hectic after Takako disappeared. Oh no. Maybe she. Okay. She didn't die, but she disappeared. Takako disappeared, and that's where there's a memorial for her. How long has she been has she disappeared? Oh no! It wasn't easy finding someone to fill her spot. Disappeared? Yes. You remember her? Remember the three of us playing together when we were kids? Yeah. Yes, that's her. We went started the company together, but then she goes and vanishes without a trace during a crucial time like this. Just how uncontrollable can she be? Drives me insane sometimes. <gasps> wait. Wait, 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 hold, hold on. I just recalled something. I literally just recalled something. Okay. In the scene with, with, with the memorial, right? With the, um... With Sashi wearing all black. He... There was a... There was a... There was a zoom in on her, right? I noticed something weird about that, but I wasn't sure about it. But in the zoom in of that, um of that uh of her I don't think it was Sachi at all I don't think I, I because um because she had a smile there was a smile on her face I believe it was a smile this game revolves around three people Takago Sachi and Narasaki her was she the one smiling did she do something to Takago? I don't know. This is just just what I just remembered. So, yeah. Oh man, hope nothing happened. But oh, Narasaki let out a small chuckle. I see you've got your plate full. You can say that again. You're not feeling exhausted, lady, are you? Have I been acting strange or something? Nah, not really, but you've always had trouble saying no to people. I mean, we made you act as class president and run the club as well. Okay, so if she did make uh, Taco disappear, is it because she likes Sachi? I don't know. This is just my speculations at the moment, but... Okay, okay. Let's just continue on. Maybe I'm just, lo overlook Maybe I'm just looking into this too deeply. But yeah. But yeah, Takako wouldn't just disappear without letting Sachi know though. Or uh, like go somewhere is what I mean. Like, she wouldn't she wouldn't go anywhere without Sachi knowing. And they, they were together, so I mean they, there's she couldn't, she couldn't just like run off and do something on her own without saying anything to her. They live together too? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out later on more flashbacks. I was worried you might be putting too much burden on yourself again. You didn't make me do anything, I did all that voluntarily. Well, in any case, overworking yourself is a surefire way to build up stress. I suppose you're right, but I'm not stressed out. Job is pretty much my hobby anyway. Glad to hear that. That's the best. You work at a psychiatry clinic around here, right? Narasaki, still holding her coffee cup, shifted her eyes from the menu to me. Yeah. So you listen to people with mental problems like schizophrenia or chronic depression, analyze them and give them advice on what to do, something along those lines? If you're watching the same TV shows as me, we have a case or two like that once in a blue moon, sure, but most of our patients are senile old folks who come to talk about their grandkids or housewives complaining about their daily chores and husband. Usually all you have to do is fix their problem to do uh, to fix their problems is hear them out. That's not a, what a psychiatrist does. It's it's more so what a psychology a therapist psychologist does. Psychologist, therapist, psychological therapist. Yeah, yeah, that word. Hard to believe the girl we played doctor with as kids actually became one. 
Narasaki ran her hand across her face. Our little clinic is hardly an establishment to brag about, really. There's a big hospital nearby, so we get very few people. You've wanted to become a doctor ever since then. Who knows, maybe, I don't remember. Narasaki placed the empty coffee cup back on the tray. I just like observing people. I believe that nothing happens without a reason. But when someone act starts raving or acting in contradiction to common sense, I can't help getting curious about its underlying cause. It's probably the main reason why I became a psychiatrist. I see. So I thought you wanted my help with something. Once we were done engaging in small talk about our jobs, Narasaki swiftly shifted to the main subject at hand. Huh? Do you have any patients suffering from hallucinations? You, are you seeing any? I think it's probably because of exhaustion, but... Narasaki slowly leaned her head forward, seeming deep in thought. Forward almost touched the cup on the tray. You remember the fits I had as a child? You had fits? Did I ever tell you? Well, my ears would sometimes begin ringing and nothing I did would make it go away. Narasaki paused for a few moments and after giving me a brief look, parted her lips to speak. Hmm, now that you mentioned I think I remember you telling me that. Ring in the ears, huh? She mused. Yeah, I thought it would drive me crazy. Well, that could be explained by acoustic hyper... Hyperesthesia. Can you tell me how exactly it would manifest? Sometimes I'd wake up at night and hear all the sounds around me as if they were amplified. I'd feel like my head would burst at any second. The shorter fits would pass over a few minutes, but some of the longer ones could go on for over half an hour. I realized my right hand was unconsciously touching my ear. Ah. Huh. Okay. So, hmm, that's weird. Like, I mean, like that. Hearing that, that's weird, huh? But anyways, oh man, let's find let's find out in the next episode, guys. What, why, why she's bringing this up? What's the reason? What's the reason why she's bringing this up to her? That's what they called uh, her in here. Beat up. Interesting. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Seabed. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!